Welcome to the Fat Fuel Family Podcast, where every week, Danny and Mauda Vega discuss topics that help families live a healthy and active lifestyle with their little ones, including nutrition and training, peaceful parenting, education, and mindset. To stay up to date, make sure to hit subscribe on this podcast and check out the blog at www.fatfuel.family. You can also find them on Facebook and Instagram at dannyvega.ms, at fatfueledmom, and at fatfueledkids, and fatfueledfamily on YouTube. Enjoy the show. Hey guys, I want to take a minute to make a quick shout out to our sponsors, Optimal Carnivore. You've heard us talk about how important organ meats are. They're some of the most nutrient dense foods on the planet. Now for people like me and my oldest son, Desmond, it's easy to eat things that turn most people off because if you tell us it's healthy, we're down for whatever. But for my other son, Dean and Maura, and I suspect a lot of you, not so much. You can make things like our organ meat burgers, but that also requires some effort and you still may not like the taste. Optimal Carnivore sources 100% grass-fed organ meats from New Zealand, freeze-drying the organs and encapsulating them into convenient bovine gelatin capsules. Unlike a lot of areas in the US, New Zealand still has a lot of rich soil, lush greenery, and one of the cleanest environments on earth. They currently have a grass-fed organ complex that contains nine different organs, including beef liver, brain, thymus, heart, kidney, spleen, pancreas, lung, and gallbladder, and they have a grass-fed liver product. These products are perfect for people who are traveling or still trying to develop an appreciation for organ meats. Optimal Carnivore covers your bases at home or while traveling, and their products are 100% grass-fed and grass-finished and free of hormones, pesticides, antibiotics, and GMOs. The mission over at Optimal Carnivore is to make it easy for people to consume the most nutrient-dense foods on the planet. They also plant one tree for every product sold, which helps the environment. Head to Amazon.com slash Optimal Carnivore and use the code VEGASAFE10 to receive 10% off all of their products. Welcome to the Fat Fuel Family Podcast. I'm your host, Danny Vega, and I'm joined by my saint of a wife, Maura <laughs> Vega. How are you, my love? I'm, uh, I've had better days, but I'm getting there. <laughs> Man, our kids have okay. been testing limits lately. It's par for the course, yeah. but it's okay because okay. this is what they do and then we have to respond. And so they are, right now we're we're in a season where they are um, getting really good at housework and chores and doing my laundry, doing her laundry, doing every single thing. The house is spotless right now, I'll tell you that. Um, but they, they just keep on pushing it and... Um, yeah. The house is going to be really clean for a long time. Yeah. Um, so anyways, <laughs> uh, I did want to say one more thing because I told our guest and uh, Maura that this right here that I'm drinking is um, these one flavor. Like, don't don't get me wrong. I love Prove It. And they have a lot of really good flavors. But this one flavor, if you've ever tried it. It's seasonal, I think, anyways. Yeah, they it's sent seasonal. it to us. It's called Cider Sipping, I think. Yeah. And it, it just tastes terrible. But I found... <laughs> Two things that you can do. Uh, one, I've had it with the watermelon Celsius, which is amazing. Or you could do it with watermelon Ultima electrolytes, which is also amazing. So um, if you guys ever want to try it, you can go to fatfieldfamily.challenge.com. And I think you get like a 10 day um, set that you can try it out and you can pick different flavors. So check that out. We just did a really cool um in our vip group coaching group we did last night um a whole thing on exogenous ketones yeah. um the history you guys probably don't know but um ketone research started with um bull sperm motility research <laughs> so um there's your fun fact for the day the more you know <laughs> so anyways i'm super excited because we have um our friend and soon to be neighbor um, who I met last month through my buddy, Adam, and um, it's been awesome. She's super cool. And let me give you a little background. So this week we have Carrie Bishke from Ready, Set, Mindful. Throughout Carrie's decade long career as a division one and professional volleyball player, she has consi consistently and successfully managed sport related stressors, navigating multiple surgeries and numerous transitions had led her to develop unique and effective strategies that enhance her athletic performance as well as her overall well-being. Carrie has 
experienced firsthand how mindfulness and meditation have positively transformed her performance on and off the court. And she wants to share how digestible and powerful Ready, Set, Mindful's approach can be for athletes. She has worked with countless novice, collegiate, and professional athletes, both nationally and internationally, in addressing many of the challenges that athletes face throughout their careers. Ready, Set, Mindful offers an effective and solution-based approach to many of the barriers that individuals face, including injury, performance anxiety, transition, that's a big one, transition, um, confidence, and overall stress. Welcome to the show, our friend and soon-to-be neighbor, Carrie Bishke. What's up, Carrie? Hey, hey, how's it going over there in Tampa, guys? Awesome. We're just keeping it warm for you. It's nice and warm. (laughs) Yeah, for real. I could tell by your tank top. Yeah, Yeah, over there in Brandon, it's probably a little warmer than it is in uh, Spokane, Washington, where you just got dumped on. So tons of snow over here, and I'm pretty pumped to make the move over in April. That's so exciting. That's her birthday month. Yes. Yeah, we're, gonna we're looking at lots of houses in Brandon, so it's we'll a see what area. happens. There's so many nice areas too, but you're really gonna love. Um, you're gonna love it here. It's it's a cool it's a cool yeah. town. So I'm very excited. We're excited. We're excited to talk all the things today with you. But we always lead with the question: What is the most critical problem that you are currently trying to solve? Ooh, yeah, there are so many. I think for me, probably one that's come to mind most recently is, you know, I just did my most recent podcast episode on cognitive flexibility and having hard conversations. And, you know, it's, it it is a critical problem. It's, it's happening in our, you know, emotionally heightened culture today and the ability to have hard conversations and respectful conversations. And it's just so important now more than ever with how polarized and emotionally elevated our climate is to just remain open and curious and respectful and having conversations and engaging with people who think differently than you. Mm-hmm. And it's it's OK. I feel like it's it's such an issue with with canceling people and cutting off conversations and deleting. And, you know, we're really missing out on a lot of opportunity for growth. You know, that's how we grow and and gain resilience is all the all the cool shit happens outside of our our bubble and our comfort zone you know so that's a really critical problem that i'm trying to to work on right now and and kind of help my clients with and family members and you know just open dialogue you know what i mean yeah absolutely it's definitely an issue it's like everybody like the cancel culture everybody's offended by everything and um it's so harmful because there's no more um there's no ability to discuss ideas and it really stops it. Like you said, it stops people from growing and it's unfortunate. Yeah. I mean, I would, I would say that for me, you know, my whole deal is humility this year. And, you know, with that, I think it's, I'm, I'm, I got to a point where I was like, you know what, I'm either not going to talk about certain subjects or, um, but I think the next step to that would be, I don't know who we heard it from, but putting yourself in the other person's position, just trying to to speak with them that way. um, I think it's so much more helpful because this is not a this is not a contest. This is not, you know, when you're trying to um, get your point across to help someone understand, it's totally different from well, this person just doesn't know. I'm going to, I'm just going to crush this person. They don't even know the facts. I got the facts. They're not going to listen to the facts. You know, if you, if yeah, you know, it's, if yeah. it's, if they're blocked off because you're so emotionally charged. Right. For sure. People get so protective over their belief systems and their, and their values. Right. And I think it stops, you know, too frequently it's, it stops becoming a conversation and it starts becoming like an assassination on someone's character and name calling and eye rolling. And it's like you lose people that way. You know, no one, no one wants to engage with someone who's completely turned off and their, their armors up, you know what I mean? So just having that capacity to take that down and really shift into an actual conversation and knowing that, you know, I don't know when it stopped being okay for us to disagree on things. And now it's just like, um, you know, it's, it's really challenging. So like, yeah, I'd like to see more conversations and, more, um, you know, engaging with people who think differently than you instead of surrounding yourself in a in an echo chamber. You know what I mean? It's it's not ever super helpful to have a bunch of people around you who are just solidifying your your views and your perspectives, right? Yeah, I, I think it's really funny because when we first met, um, 
you know, <laughs> it was just so funny because we we didn't know, you know, how where each other stood on certain things. It didn't matter. But as we, you know, warmed up to each other and got to know each other better, you know, you know, little fences came down and, and we came closer to meeting in the middle and meeting in the middle. And then we find out we're very alike in a lot of areas. It doesn't always happen that way. Yeah. But I think it's because we started from a place of mutual respect. You're a human being. I'm a human being. Um, and and look at where we ended up. And now you're yeah. you're one of you're one of you're part of the crew now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I love it. I think that's so commonly, you know, that's it's how we engage and we we kind of like poke a little bit and kind of like throw out little comments and see where people stand. And OK, we don't want to offend someone over here. So we're going to kind of stifle our voice a little bit. But but yeah, it's super nice to be able to just be be open and and really be aligned with um yeah, I feel aligned with who I am and having a conversation with with you guys. I'm so excited to be neighbors with you. And yeah, Adam threw out a little disclaimer prior to meeting you. He's like, you know, Danny's a little different. And so then I was like, all it's right, true, cool. It's true. Is that like when you're trying to set your friend up with a friend and you're like, she's so nice, you know? I'm like, who, who, what does that mean? Exactly. <laughs> like, he's so he's so different. He's different. Like, but but now I know, so, different is good. <laughs> that is true. All right, so shout out to Adam. Yeah, Thank big you. shout out to Adam. <laughs> All right. So, you know, you work with a lot of athletes and, you know, I'd assume that there's at least a few areas where, you know, they're facing kind of the the same problems. What would you say the biggest problem um, or the biggest challenge many of them face with regard to to mindset? Yeah, I think, you know, I, I see I work with a lot of college athletes and athletes who are transitioning away from their sport and dealing with injury. And so that's obviously um, you know, a big, a big shift in, in mindset and where are they going after, after this point. Um, but what I see a lot is athletes struggling with sleep, having too much on their plate, so much is being asked of them. And there's really this, you know, overstimulation piece that I deal with a lot. And so I, I always like to start with sleep with athletes. Another problem is, you know, anxiety, perfectionistic tendencies. I mean, you're an athlete, like, you know, Maura, you dance, right? Per talk about perfectionism. Yes. I mean, I mean, yes. as a dancer, so it's a, it's a big deal for athletes and that's part of their identity, but it's also, man, it can really, it can really lead to a lot of stress. And so um, with that per perfectionistic tendencies comes that negative self-talk. And so that's what I deal with a ton with the, you know, the athletes and the high performers that I see is I'm just beating themselves up for not, you know, not meeting their expectations or expectations of their coach or parents or whatever. So, yeah, those are some big ones that that athletes face for sure. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's kind of related. After football, I wasn't ready for that. You know, I wasn't I didn't even think about it, you know, and and even though I was pretty sure, like, you know, the one of the sayings is like, you have you have a better chance of getting hit by lightning than making it to the NFL. But like I had like two or three years of darkness. It was just like, what am I going to do? You know, I was I felt so lost. And then luckily I found CrossFit. <laughs> That's how often people yeah. find stuff like that all the time. Athletes. But um, it's true. I think like it's so good to have. Um, and, and parents that are listening to this, this is something that you want to think about with your children as well, um, whether they're going to college or whether they're um, going to go to college and not play sports at all. So that's one end, you know, you, you, you finish high school and then you go to college. There's going to be a little bit of a hole if, if this person was a competitive person. Same thing for someone transitioning out of college to their college career or like you said, an injury that one, I, I can assume that one is like, that's traumatic, you know? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I know when I transitioned unintentionally from, from, you know, retiring from my, my pro career, I met my husband and I'm super happy. Everything worked out the way that it did, but I didn't, I didn't plan on retiring. It kind of hit me like a ton of bricks. I, um, and you know, when that happened, it was like, you know, when you don't prepare for it and it, and it happens pretty quickly, either through a, through a transition, like an injury, or you're, you know, you're just deciding to be done. There's, yeah, there is a lot of darkness that comes with that. I went through a big wave of depression and loss of identity and who am I? I'm not Carrie the volleyball player, yeah. you know, like I'm, what am I doing? You know, thank God I, I had a master's degree in like education to fall back on and and some people don't. And so it's even more of a deficit when when you lose that part of yourself, you know? And so, yeah, I work with a lot of, a lot of college athletes preparing for 
well, high school athletes preparing for that college transition. Hey, you're now not a big fish, small pond. You're now a small ass fish in a big pond. So how are we going to work with that? And then with, with college athletes, yeah. What are you going to do after like the odds of going pro? Like maybe it, you know, it's not, not really in your favor. So what's the game plan? Who are you outside of your sport? You know, it's a big deal. Yeah, I'm going to, I know I have a question there, but it kind of just made me think of something when you were talking about that and like my own experience. Do you find mm-hmm. that? Cause looking back, I can see that this is pretty much what I did. <laughs> but like, like you said, I was a dancer. Yeah. Like that's literally was my whole life. Like I was a dancer, not to say that I wasn't good at anything else or that I don't have other, other interests, but like really like a true passion. It was that. And then when I got to college, yeah. it's almost like I was so pressured because you're almost like feel rushed to make a decision on what it is that you're supposed to do that. And because of the way that we are, which, you know, in the sense of like you're saying, like perfectionism, like we're we want to be high level at everything. I feel mm-hmm. like I almost that's the reason that I chose what I chose. It wasn't because I really not to say I didn't like it. I do love it was it was a chem a chemistry major. I and not to say that I don't love science because I do and it's but at the same time I know now that in a way like it was also like this is this is good enough. You know what I mean? Like this is also going to make me feel like yeah, prestigious we, yeah. or or like it's but at the same time, it's like I, I just chose it to choose it. You know what I mean? So do you find that that happens? And like, how can we like what what do you recommend? Like what's a, when people really have a hard time finding that identity? Like what are some ways that they can yeah. they can do that <laughs> healthy in a healthy way yeah. without going yeah, into absolutely. debt? <laughs> like not really going that path, you know? Sure. Yeah. I think that's yeah, that's such a such a valid question. And, you know, I do a lot of exercises with with clients and trying to figure out, you know, extrapolate like what what that is for them, like what their interests are, what lights you up. We do a lot of like purpose, you know, exercises and really get down to what else fills them up outside their sport and then getting their their community, their friends and family to you know, comment on what, you know, what, what are my strengths? Like, why do you, you know, I get them to do an exercise. It's like, why do you hang out with me? Like, what makes me so great? Yeah. Like, why do people go to you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What do people go to you for? Yeah. They start to figure out like, oh, okay, well, maybe I'm not really seeing because I'm too close to it. Maybe I'm not really seeing all of my other strengths, but these other people like, okay, yeah, you're right. I have this. And yeah, I'm like actually good at art or I'm good at, you know, good at gardening. Like, what am I going to do with that? So we start kind of brainstorming ideas and start doing like a what lights, you know, what lights me up kind of, um, you know, exercise. And that that seems to facilitate like a lot of ideas and gets them in touch with the other part of their identity, you know, outside of their athletic identity. That's good. Yeah, that's good. And I I agree. I kind of do something similar with, you know, I I work with a lot of girls where I lead a a group of girls. And a lot of times they when they're trying to figure out like what content to put out, it's like they don't know. They're like, well, I don't know what I'm good at. And that's what I tell them. Like, well, what do people go to you for? You know, and it's like kind of what we were talking about with Isaac Morehouse the other day, where sometimes people wouldn't think that they would be good in a certain thing because they're not looking at it that way. Like if you just tell someone like, do you want a sales job? They're like, well, no, but really when you tell them, well, this is the company, this is what you would be doing. They're like, oh, that sounds good. And you're good with people. So, so yeah. Yeah. I think um, one more thing I'll add is, is uh, I love that exercise because parents are going to automatically, you know, I just see, I don't want to, I don't want to like throw parents under the bus, but I, I feel like a lot of the time parents are, are thinking, okay, she would be great at this profession. She would be great at this profession. And it's like, no, 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 that's not the question. The question is like, what is, what is it that you see that, that makes her really excited? Yes. You've, you've had a, a, you know, front row seat, you know, to her whole life. What has she been in love with forever? Right. And, and then it becomes, where's there a need you know, and, and it's by committee. So it's amazing the synergy that you can have when you have like a bunch of people together. And then all of a sudden the friend says, wow, yeah, you know what? That's right. What about this? You know, that's, that's really cool. I like that. Yeah. 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 You're so right. Yeah. Parents have a big role in like empowering their kids and, and 
pointing out, you know, from kind of a neutral standpoint as much as possible. Um, you're still the parents, right? But, um, but, but yeah, you do have a front row seat. So I love that you said that. I love that. All right. Well, this was the actual question that was next. I just thought of, I just thought of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So aside oh, from like yeah. our current situation and everything that's going on, what would you say? Oh, this is a great question for me too. But what would you say fuels anxiety um, with your clients? And what are some of the proactive solutions you recommend to address anxiety? Yeah. Yeah. It's a great question. I think with the clients that I work with, I think athletes and high performers, you know, across the board, there's this extreme pressure to perform. And especially in the culture that we're living in today, like comparison culture is such a thing. And, you know, it's it's hard. Like you can't just like when I was in when I was in college, you know, if I had a really shitty game and I was feeling really low about that, I can just shut it off. Like after that game, it's not going to be replayed. Like people aren't going to be talking about it on Instagram. Right. There's there's not going to be all this video. And so now. But if an athlete has you know, a a crappy game or something happens or a big mistake, you know, if they're an elite athlete and it's like documented and they have the ability to kind of repeat that over and over, it's like, oh man, it's hard. So it does cause a lot of anxiety. Um, You know, again, anxiety is fueled by the, you know, injuries, retirement, transition to your post-competitive life. You know what I mean? Um, Having kids uh, you know, being an athlete and then having a family, like, how does that change? Now my, my time management needs to be a little bit more dialed in and you don't have all of that time that you maybe once had. So there's some anxiety there. So yeah, lots of, lots of anxiety. That's definitely an issue with, that's the number one thing that I see, uh, you know, that I see clients for, for sure. And then addressing that anxiety, you know, for me, I'm I'm big into, you know, meditation and yoga teacher as well. So I'm massive into breath work. Breath work is everything um, for, for me. And I've seen how that has really transformed like my performance as an athlete and my emotional regulation and, and all of that, like in my personal life. And so, you know, breath work really is everything. That's such a such a critical tool for for athletes to be able to pull out, um, especially with with having anxiety, you know, and I think building that awareness of what brings you anxiety and taking taking notes of when you're in an, a situation that brings you anxiety, like who am I with? What time of day is it? Like what's happening around me and and what is my body? What's what is my body's response to this environment and really taking note of that, because then you can actually pinpoint what it is that's bringing you anxiety. Right. And then we can do some, you know, box breathing. We can do the three, four. We can do a few other techniques to get ahead of that. So you're not just Groundhog Day, like just, you know, Jesus, take the wheel. I hope I don't get anxiety today. Now you have a little bit more control over your day and you kind of are tuned into these facets of your day that, that like bring you some anxiety. And so we can get ahead of it with the breath work. So it's a super, it's my favorite tool to use. I, I totally agree. I think it's breath work is something that if you can master it, it's one of those things where you really start to learn how to actively switch between sympathetic and parasympathetic. And if you can do that, you become a superhero. I just want to say everybody right now, I know we start, you know, we're driving, you know, we're, we're working out on the treadmill. Rewind what what she just said, guys, please. If you were not listening, I really want you to understand this because this is such a simple message. Yeah. You know, Carrie's talking about being mindful. Okay. And and Carrie said that if you can be mindful, you will not be carried away by the wind. You will be in the driver's seat. One thing that that Mauda has had to deal with as someone who's an empath is are these my feelings? Yeah. It's you know, intense. these, you know, the feelings, you know, when you're empathetic, you know, you you start to like absorb absorb. absorb other people's feelings and how much better. And you're very in tune. Like, yeah, it's not even the person doesn't even necessarily have to be like expressing it for me to to get it. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. So like, you know, I, I just have to say that because, you know, my wife suffered a long time, you know, in her life with these feelings. And, you know, she didn't up until she knew that she can that she realized that they they you know some of these feelings are not hers like why am i feeling this right now why am i feeling this way you know that question right there stopping and just being like okay let me look at my set and setting you know let me look at all of these things that 
that so many people don't listen to and so many people aren't mindful about. So I love that. Um, now, one of the things that when you had me on, I love this. I'm not going to steal your thunder, but um, you know, you spoke about one of the things, and you know, I'd love for you to mention that and and everything you do. But from a physical standpoint, you know, what are the some of the exercises that that you have people do to develop resilience? Yeah, I mean, the biggest one for me, and the the one exercise that I always have people do that they are so turned <laughs> off by is yeah. cold training. <laughs> It's my favorite thing you were to do because, like, because 100% people will do, they'll jump off a cliff. They'll, I'll, they'll have hard conversations with their I'll mom. Die, I'll die of you know. heat in the sauna for like an hour. Yeah. Yeah. There's, like there's having a million like things people would rather do. I will go in the cold. I'm going to do it though. I'm going to do it. Absolutely. <laughs> it's something that's so anxiety provoking for people. And cause our emotional brain just turns on. Right. And our emotional brain is, you know, we really gravitate toward that instant, you know, gratification, that dopamine hit. We want what's easy and warm and comfortable, but our rational brain, you know, in our rational brain, um, you know, it, it knows what's best for us. That's our opportunity co to connect with our, the higher version of ourselves. And so the cold training, you know, getting uncomfortable, putting yourself in a really uncomfortable position, cold, cold is like amazing for that. You know, it's something you can do. Um, you know, I, I like to start my clients off just really accessible again, like a really digestible, um, you know, session for them just to step in your warm shower. Right. And then just for 30 seconds, as cold as you can stand it, turn it to cold, do the breath work that we, you know, we talk about, um, you know, box breathing, or we do lots of different techniques with, with the clients I work with. And so we do the breath. You're not holding your breath for 30 seconds. You're doing your breath and you're focusing mm -hmm. on counting. You're focusing on your breath. And that helps that time go by a little bit quicker. So just starting with that 30 seconds cold and then going back to your warm shower, knowing that that's like light at the end of the tunnel, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? That gives people a little bit of hope, but, but you're activating a part of your brain that doesn't get used so much. So you're really um, you, you know, you're, you're really feeling the physiological benefits of, you know, getting that decrease in inflammation, muscle recovery, circulation, but you're also opening up this, you know, the, the rational part of your brain that is going to hold on to, you know, the stress reduction, emotional resilience. So we really want that. We want, we want to do something every day that we can be proud of ourselves for, you know, making your bed. Great. Like that's, that's a tool. Absolutely. Getting the cold, damn, that's better. That, that is better right there. So you're just with that, um, you're giving yourself that you're teaching yourself and conditioning your mind that it has the capacity to do something hard, whether that's a conversation or, you know, extra reps or, you know, um, drinking that gallon of water, you know, uh, you have the capacity to do something hard and it's really important to, to do things that, that make us uncomfortable. I love, uh, the last thing you said, it's so true. It, it really does carry over into, other areas of our lives and a lot of people tend that they, they might do something hard at some point and then if you're not working that muscle out it, it gets atrophied and it gets out of shape you know so that daily reminder uh to get uncomfortable is huge and you know we are fat fueled family so we got to talk about burning fat this is also a great way to burn fat if you guys haven't seen my you know our, our good friend mike mutzel's um work on um hypothermic training oh, it's he's amazing got he's got that the legit yeah he's like, got the new thing. one the, the new tub that's, that's really like, legit yeah it's like beautiful i gotta it's like i'm gonna get one when gorgeous. i when i move over there yeah i'm getting that trough yeah, that you i want to get one too but <laughs> yeah it, it burns a ton of having fat that obviously helps like having it ready yeah of course because it's like okay if i want to do an ice bath it's like i gotta go through all these steps yeah like, we gotta buy like you know, 10 bags of ice you know yeah. but uh, but you know it, it activates your brown adipose tissue which is um you know this is what babies are born with and they burn a ton of fat that's why i remember when we had our, our boys in the bed with us when they were babies they were like little heaters because <laughs> you if you can <laughs> activate it's called the beijing of fat because most people who are sedentary who carry a lot of fat, it's white fat. It's not, it's it's not working for mm -hmm. you. It's it's hard to burn that fat. But if you can do this every day, you are going to beige your fat. You are going to burn more fat. So if you needed one more reason to do cold training, I do it every single morning. Our showers do not get cold here, unfortunately. Unfortunately, it gets literally. I have to stand. It's not that cold. It's. I have to stand in the shower and I have to turn it on, because I'm only going to get yeah. a good. Minute it's only that first, cold. yeah, that first like it's about a minute. It's 
It's yeah, because jolt. our pipes okay. are, are high, you know, they're not very deep. And plus, it doesn't get that cold it here to begin with. Here, so it's been a little colder these days, probably, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah it's been it's still awesome. it, it's it's a little colder. And by cold, I mean, like 50 50s. in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! And then it's yeah, like eight. It's, it's like already seventy over here. And, so and like by noon, it'll be seventy. But <laughs> but that's um, crazy. So for sure, I have to get a cold yeah, tub. The tub. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but so yeah, so many benefits. I think yeah, just just so many benefits, and that really does carry over when you're every opportunity when you're giving yourself every opportunity to again practice that that breath work. You're strengthening your neural pathways, and you're making you're making it easier for your you know for for you to go into that um, that breath work when you're in spaces where you're, you're feeling anxious or when you are having a hard conversation and you're feeling like your blood pressure, like rise and you're getting sweaty and tense and whatnot. Um, remembering that breath work, you're going to go into that as your default mode. And that's going to really help you create space between you and that difficult situation. So again, yeah, so many benefits for cold training and breath work in particular. The breath work is so underrated too. Like until I started doing it, I didn't realize that I wasn't breathing. I'm like, oh, look, oh, I don't yeah. think I breathe. I think I just breathed yeah. for like the first time today. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and we really have to be told that, you know, and if it's it's something that people think it's like oh, just breathing, like you think it's natural, but it's actually not. It's actually not for a lot of us who have been living with anxiety for a long time. You don't even realize that you don't take a deep breath. <laughs> So, so yeah, totally. Yeah. It's intentional, intentional breathing. Like I, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's so important. I read James Nestor's book the, you know, like a couple months ago and he talks about, you know, how we're, how we're breathing wrong most of the time. We're a lot of mouth breathers. And so, yeah, breathing through your nose as much as you can throughout the day, um, you know, keeping everything internal and really breathing from your diaphragm, you know, cause most of us throughout the day, are breathing super shallow throughout our mouth and that's just increasing our anxiety so just do yourself a favor and breathe through your nose and just from your diaphragm. yeah um i remember that book i think <laughs> i read tip. it was was he the one who he he purposely taped his um his, his nose uh yeah yeah no, he did the opposite his mouth well he yeah taped, he taped, yeah he was only mouth breathing right for a long time and then no he was um well so he did so he did a a, a case study through, you know, so they studied how, you know, their, your physiological response, breathing through your mouth and then through your nose. And then the biggest findings were that when you tape your mouth, so he has this whole tape. Oh, I'm thinking of um, a different that, book. That he kind of recommends, but, oh, but this one. Yeah. So he really encourages Absolutely. nose breathing. And so you, you breathe through and Austin, my, my husband and I actually do oh, yeah. that. Like we'll, we'll kiss each other before we go to bed. And then we're like, all right, putting on the, <laughs> yeah. the duct tape. Yeah. And and it's been My so helpful. Like he has really disrupted mm -hmm. sleep and he did oh, it for a little it's bit. It's killer. We, we, think we yeah, go we just got to be intentional, more intentional yeah, about it. He's such a mouth breather because of like allergies yeah. and just problems. But it, it does. It goes. We, yeah. we don't even realize, but it like affects your jaw structure. It affects the way your face even looks. Oh. Yep. Um, I was yeah. thinking of another book, so I think, because things. this guy, he 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 took the arrows. He he jumped on the grenade for us. Like he literally mouth breathed for a month only. And it was like disastrous. Like he talked about Oof, like sure he so showed bad. all the things that it's probably so bad for your to your teeth, too, right? Teeth, blood work, um, everything was worse when you mouth breathe. No, I think you're okay, so I think you're right. I think you're thinking of James Nestor because in, in the, the beginning, beginning yeah. of the book, he that's talks about, yeah, he talks about um, kind of like our ancestral, you know, like journey and how we've, we've, you know, mouth breathing versus nose breathing and how our, our face and our jaw and our structure has changed because of the mm -hmm. way that we breathe. And so, yeah, he definitely brings that up. So I think you're, I think you're right. And then he goes into like, and Hey, oh, yeah. here's the flip side of like That's what it, it looks like. Yep. So, That's awesome. Yeah. It's crazy. So anyone hasn't checked Is out yeah, James Nestor's book. Oh, you breathe. breathe. Yeah. Breathe. Like, yeah. Breath, breath or breathe. Yeah, yeah, breath or breathe. Tomato, tomato. <laughs> it's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Love it. Awesome. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about it. the course you offer called Building Mindful um, Muscle. Who is that for and what can people expect um, as they go through it um, out on their own pace? Yeah. Yeah. So I just started this course. I'm, I'm super excited about putting it together. It's really for athletes and high performers who are interesting, interested in, you know, leveling up their performance, decreasing anxiety, negative self-talk and any, you know, mental barriers that get in the way of them aligning with really their best athletic self. So it's an all encompassing course that kind of walks you through, um, you know, deconstructing limiting beliefs, 
uh, meditation, breath work, you know, building awareness. Um, I incorporate movement and nutrition in there, self-care boundaries. So it's really a holistic course that if you're looking to, yeah, if you're looking to like up level and, and you want, yeah, yeah, you want these, uh, these tips and, uh, these different exercises. It's, it's again, like I like to make everything, you know, again, working with a lot of college athletes who have the attention span of like, God bless them, but like mice, right? Like, so it's really hard. You gotta, you gotta give them stuff that's, that's accessible that they can, they can actually practice. And so I really break it down, not just theory. We don't talk about it. We talk about how you can kind of build it into your routine. Um, and so super, yeah, I'm super excited about it. Lots of actionable tips in there. I love that. I think, um, gosh, it's such a, it's, it's missing, you know, and and like for us, we've tried to incorporate that type of stuff um, into like, for example, 75 hard is a blessing because I get to do every single week. I get to like um, design like a kind of a curriculum as they're going through this hard thing to keep them engaged, keep them mindful. But um, look, this is so important. People, it's so odd to me the the amount of money that people waste on and guys, I'm not I'm not criticizing you. We all do it. Yeah. But we waste so much money and so much time on things that will never pay dividends, will never will only harm us a lot of the time, will take us further away from our goals, will take us further away from joy, like true joy, not just a fleeting um, feeling of happiness. You know, it's so important to invest in yourself, like with a course just like this, because yeah. I mentioned this yesterday in a post that I made and I, I was limited. I had to really try to get my point across in an Instagram, which they give you they give you room. Yeah. But um, yeah. I'm long winded, first of all. Second of all, I it's a deep subject. And the yeah. bottom line is the connection between, you know, a lack of spiritual health and a lack of self-development work and an actual physical health is the correlation is so tight i mean it's 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 to me as close to causation as possible you know yeah. you really do notice that um if you aren't focusing on on becoming a better version of yourself being um doing introspection knowing what your danger zones are knowing all these different areas like basically doing uh a, a swot analysis on your life you know, what are my strengths? What are my weaknesses? What are my opportunities? What are my threats? What are my threats externally? What are my threats internally? So I'm I'm just saying this because I can vouch for Carrie. You know, I, I just think that um, taking an approach this way and, and just taking two steps back. I know it's the beginning of the year. Everybody's trying to just go, 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 go. And that used to be me when I was in my sales career. And my first manager was very nurturing in that way, Rudy. Um, and he would yeah. be like, he would be like, Danny, I know you'd love to go out there. You're doing 12 calls a day. You know, you're, he's like, but let's just sit down for two days and let's just strategize. Let's do, you know, a little bit of that. And it's so true. Like it's multiple times more. You're going to, you're going to think to yourself, I need to be out there. I need to be in the field. I need to be doing whatever it is. And there's something to be said about that because a lot of people don't take action at the same time. Right. It's so important to develop yourself because these things, the years go by and they start to build on themselves. And, you know, I, I think this course would be a, a great way to do that. Uh -huh. Thanks, Danny. Yeah, I think that's definitely, uh, yeah, it's definitely a concept I try to get across to a lot of the clients that I work with. Like you have to slow down to go fast. Like we have to put some intentionality for your day. Otherwise it's just going to freaking fly by and you're going to be like, what, what just happened? You know, you don't want to black out for your whole college career, your whole, you know, um, your whole life. So having some intentionality behind it. And so, yeah, I think this course could be, you know, it's going to be really helpful for, for a lot of people who are looking to just, you know, really reset, want to decrease your anxious thoughts, your ruminating thoughts and that negative self-talk that gets in the way from you doing absolutely everything in your day, then, then yeah. That's, that's something I feel really, really passionate about. Before you ask the last question, I just want to ask her because I don't think I saw it. Um, you know, this is yeah. uh, obviously self-directed. So if you're a professional or if you're still an athlete, you can do this at your own pace. But um, how, Absolutely. what would you say? I don't want to, you know, more or less a time frame that someone would get through this course. Yeah. I mean, if you're going through, um, you know, you're going through, you can get through and 
less than a, you know, less than a couple hours for sure. Yeah. But the work, you gotta do the work. That's the part. Yeah. If you're putting in, I mean, if you're going, I mean, you, you go through, I go through a course and I kind of, you know, I, I hit the gas pedal, like I go for it, but it, it's all, all dependent upon your, your, your lifestyle and your balance and how long you kind of want to sit with some of these concepts and do the exercises. So, I mean, you can look at the cons. I mean, I'll say two hours. I don't know. I mean, for, for a few of these concepts, you're going to want to sleep on some things. You're going to want to, you know, get input from friends and family, that kind of stuff. So if you're properly going through all of these exercises, uh, then it's going to take you a little bit longer. But I would say max like a, a week, you know, to to really go through and have some intention behind, oh, that's behind good what to you're know. doing. Yeah, that's good. Because that's another thing that people is like, you know, they feel like, uh, uh, what's this commitment? You know, what? because there's one thing is the money and then the other thing is the time commitment. So for sure. And each video is, I mean, it's, I'm really mindful about, you know, the, the a, attention span and, and focus and what's, what's accessible and what's digestible because, you know, I'm a therapist and work with a lot of athletes. And again, I know, I know the attention span. I know when you start losing people, you know, and so, uh, these videos are, are really, really short, really accessible. So it's good. I love it. This is so needed too, especially, you know, I'm going to say it again. It's funny. I was just thinking how like, our ancestors are probably like they would laugh a little bit because but they they different different world. They had a different world, a completely different <laughs> world. But like the things that we have, you know, like we're like you offering this. It's like so simple, but it's so needed. Like because everyone is like everything built around us is made to make us literally insane, like yeah. clinically yeah. insane. You know what yeah. I mean? Like I like the whole yeah. ADD thing, like all of that stuff. I'm like, oh, I know how to get ADD. You want me to show you? Just go on TikTok for a day and tomorrow you will have <laughs> ADD. Your brain will be scrambled eggs. Yeah, It is a fact because it's dopamine, right? So it's like, and I love that you said that, right? Like the reason as somebody who struggles with anxiety, who's a perfectionist, but also fails to plan a lot of the time, Danny calls it like drifting, right? Like he'll be like, are you drifting today? And I'm like, I am, I'm reacting. Like I'm just reacting to each problem because I didn't have a plan. And a lot of our anxiety could be taken away if we're just more intentional about how we spend our time, notice, and of course, building that mindfulness because you have to you have to actually be mindful in the moment to be like, what am I doing right now scrolling? Like you actually have to have that mindfulness because if not, you lose so much time before you know it, you're like two hours later. You know what I mean? And then it's like, no, you. it's not that you didn't have time. It's that you're just reacting. And um, yeah, so I love this. It's so needed. You just drove down the highway, like on I-75, throwing money out the window. That's, that's. Yes. Think of your time as like dollar bills and like every couple of feet you're throwing away dollar bills and as, as time, you know? Exactly. And time is our most valuable commodity. It is. Yeah. No, it's it's very true. I think getting back to a more, you know, we have to simplify. It's so important for us to simplify our, our lives sometimes and get back to the things that are really meaningful because it's easy to get caught up in, you know, being a consumer and everything, all the stimulate, you know, everything that's that's meant to stimulate us and, and really being mindful of, is this good for me? Like, am I allowing myself to get caught up in this? Is this going to serve me? What are the dividends that this is going to pay? And so that's that's a really big piece. And I think with anxiety, the antidote for anxiety is mindfulness, right? And structure. And so allowing yourself, like with a lot of the clients that I work with, you know, in the morning we do an exercise like, you know, no screens until, you know, a certain amount of time. And then you're, you're setting an alarm to build in your, your mindfulness practice. And so everything is really structured and intentional. Um, so that throughout the day you're kind of setting alarms and you're, you're getting reminders, just like you would have a reminder for a super important meeting, a podcast, your kids, a kid appointment, uh, you're, you're building in that breath work. So throughout the day you're, you're, you're not drifting or if you're drifting, you're not, you're not drifting too far. You know what I mean? And so I think that's, that's a really big piece of the puzzle, not allowing yourself to drift. I think, um, you know, one of my favorite quotes, it's, uh, you know, Marcus Aurelius. And he said, he says, you know, when forced by circumstances into utter confusion, you know, get a hold of yourself quickly, you know, don't be locked out of the rhythm for any longer than, than necessary. You'll be able to, you know, keep the beat if you keep returning to it. And so 
I, I love that. And I think the breath is what you keep returning to. So when you, when you drift, just come back to your breath. Yeah. It's the simplest, easiest way to get mindful quick. I agree. Wow. Mm -hmm. This is such a great yeah, conversation. Sure. Thank you so much. Um, for our last question, yeah, what absolutely. projects are you currently working on? Anything else interesting that you want to share and where people can find you online? Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I'm doing a new, so I have my, my podcast, Ready, Set, Mindful. It's on Spotify and Apple, and I'm doing a new style of episode. So the Weekend Warrior audit style episode. So I'm looking for athletes, high performers who are, you know, entering that post-competitive space and maybe transitioning away from being a college athlete, high school athlete, and looking for a new sport or, you know, just figuring out how their mindset can kind of shift into this new space. So if you're interested in, in uh, being a part of that, I'm that's something that I'm doing. So you get a free 30 minute coaching session and it'll be aired as one of a podcast, you know, one of my podcast episodes. Um, so that's something I'm super excited about right now that's happening. And then, yeah, just started or just completed that that course. And so those are the two big things that have been on my radar as of far as and of, then uh, it's so uh, ready, set, mindful on Instagram. Is that also the website? Yep. So ready, set, And then on IG, it's at ready, set, mindful, Facebook, ready, set, mindful, and um, yeah, that's where you can find me on LinkedIn as well. All right, Ready guys, you heard it. Free 30 minute session. I love this Amazing. stuff. Hop on that. Uh, we'll definitely yeah. when this comes out, we'll definitely share that on social to to get as many people as possible. Um, man, you can't turn down something for free. Come on. I mean, this is this is getting a professional uh, who's put a bunch of years into this and yes. a bunch of thought into this. So it makes for good entertainment, too. It makes because other people can listen to it. And uh, be in this, you know, completely safe space where they're listening to something and they can identify with things without being in the hot seat, you know? Exactly. Yeah, that's how we learn and grow, right? Like listening to our peers and how people are handling different problems and, you know, some actionable tips that they can either, you know, discard or apply to their to their own lives and their own athletic career. So, yeah. Well, thank you so much, Carrie. This was awesome. Thank you awesome. guys. Yeah, this has been such an awesome conversation and I can't wait to meet you guys in person. I'm so pumped to meet you over so in Tampa. Same so. here.